Our favorite Disney Springs quick service restaurant has a brand new menu, and we're here to try it out. Let's see. Hello everyone, I'm Jay. And I'm Sam. And you are watching the Theme Park Foodies. And of course, we're at Disney Springs. We're back, back again, because we just love Disney Springs. We love the atmosphere, we love the offerings. They have a brand new drone show that we haven't seen yet, but we have to see. And we recently did a video on here, counting down our top 10 Disney Springs snacks. Keep a lookout for that video. But in that video, we went over to Morimoto Street Food, which is our favorite quick service restaurant in all of Disney Springs. We found out they have a bunch of new menu items, right? Yeah, it's like we wanted to try them out that day, but we were already filming like so many yeah. things for that video. So we're like, we have to come back. Yeah, so they have a brand new like fried chicken. They have a Korean corn dog. They have, um, I think, a kimchi ramen. Ooh, I definitely want to try that out. And there's one other item as well. So they have four brand new items. A rice ball. Oh, rice ball. There you go. Mm -hmm. Look at the brain on Sam. We're going to go over there. We're going to have that, but we're also going to have other things there. We're going to try to do like a full quick service dining review. We, we, I don't think I've ever really done something like this before where we just focus on the quick service, but we think that the street food in Morimoto definitely warrants it, right? Yeah, I mean, it is it is attached to the Morimoto restaurant, but it is outdoors, but it is covered, and they do have fans. Yeah. And I just think it's if you want really high-quality food, but you don't, like, you're not in the mood to do a sit-down meal, I think it's, like, a great option. Like, if you're coming from the park and you yeah. just see you're in your park clothes and you just want something tasty but, like, don't feel like being fancy. Or you're looking to shop. And you just want to grab something yeah. quick to eat. It's, I mean, it's a it's a great it's a great spot. For those that don't know, Morimoto is the Iron Chef. He's a celebrity chef, and this is the Morimoto is his restaurant, obviously his namesake restaurant here at Disney Springs. Street food is kind of like a little window that's kind of right next to it. But like Sam said, it's covered. It has fans. It's very nice. We're going to show you guys how to get there. We're going to do a full dining review, and we're going to stop by one of our favorite dessert spots here at Disney Springs at the end and do a little review of some snacks you can find over there. Are you ready? All right, if you enjoy the content, please like and subscribe. Join us for our dinner dining on Morimoto Street Food here at Disney Springs. So Morimoto and Morimoto Street Food are going to be located in the landing section of Disney Springs. In order to get to the landing, you'll have to go cross over some form of bridge. So if you're entering through the orange garage like we did, there's actually going to be two bridges you'll see. One to the left and one to the right. You want to take the bridge to the right and then bear right in front of STK. Then right across and right past Chef Art Smith's homecoming, you're gonna see Morimoto. You can already see the ducks roasting them, cooking in the back. I don't think those are actually real ducks. I don't, I don't know, are they? Let me know in the comments. All right, so we've definitely ordered the most items we ever have today from Morimoto Street Food. We got two things that we love and have had previously, and we got the four brand new items. Sam is going to start off with the soup. What is this? What is in this actually, Sam? A bulgogi kimchi ramen with thin sliced sweet soy marinated beef, um, a duck broth, house pickled kimchi, a scallion, soy marinated egg. It's a big portion. You gotta, it's, I don't know if you can tell, but it's, it's a hefty size. Bulgogi's been in style. I've seen a lot of Disney restaurants get more bulgogi action going on recently. I think I need a fork. How am I gonna... Yeah, I think you need, to, you need to swirl with a fork and then use the spoon for the broth. All right, so Sam got herself a little sampling. The ramen is cooked perfectly. It has a little bit of heat to it, but not much. The beef is very tender. I'm gonna try to get a little piece of this soy egg. This is really good. That's a lot of flavor and it's a great portion. I mean, I wish it wasn't very hot outside while I'm eating this. I'm gonna give this an eight. I feel like eight is the lowest number we've ever given any ever have given any of the food here. So, and and I think the Iron Chef is he's pretty brave, sporting a brand new soup as the summer months come in. Now I'm gonna have my hand at the bulgogi. Noodles definitely feel very tender. I'm trying to get to do like a double take. Good soup. I want to get a little more of it though. You're right. Just a very light spice. The bulgogi is super tender. Decent amount of meat in it as well. I also feel like this is a fun place to come and like share a bunch of things with everyone. I feel like the portions lend themselves to sharing. As you'll see as we eat more things here. Soup isn't like a, something you think of shareable, but this is so big. 
it's really good too. I'm gonna go with your eight. Like, I don't think it's the best soup I ever had for like a quick service soup. If it's like, I can see this really hitting December, January around here when you have that little chill outside. Little much for the summer, but you know, with AC blast in the house later, I think we'll be able to enjoy this. All right, so this is Morimoto's brand new fried chicken. What, do you, what exactly is this? So it's a Taiwanese style and it's five spice marinated chicken and you choose a curry spice or a Beijing spice. They said the curry spice was the less spicy one and they do give it to you on the side. I'm not a huge spice person, so I'm actually just gonna eat the chicken there. I'll try it with the salt, curry salt they give you. This does look very crispy. Oh, and it's, they don't have knives here. And I feel like it's because all the food is so tender that you can just pull everything apart. Like the, everything just falls apart, the ribs, the meat and the soup, the chicken, I just pulled it off. It's so like light, it's a very light fry. I like it, but it's not like wowing me. I think the interior is juicy but the outside is almost a little too dry for me. It's just like, whatever this is, almost feels like flour. Like it's just giving it too much dryness. I liked it to be more crunchy than dry. Yeah, I was thinking it was gonna be like the kuriagi chicken and chicky side. It's a little like, it's just too much on the dry side, but still not bad. I would give this, I would give this one a six. Okay, that's the lowest number we've ever given Morimoto. Spice jazzes it up, but. Let me see how the spice is. All right, so let's try out this little curry salt. How do I even get it on here? All right, let's tear off. I don't know the proper way to eat this. Yeah, All right, I guess maybe do I dip it? Maybe I have too much curry salt now. All right, it's got a little bit on there. See, I like that. Tim, I think you're missing, I think the curry salt is what's adding that extra flavor to it. I'm gonna try it without it real quick. You it's, need not meant, it's not meant to be eaten dry. It's my fault. I'm an idiot. Not your fault, you're not, you're not a spice girl. You know, but you are a spice girl in my heart. The curry salt adds to it. It's really not spicy, the curry salt. It really just kind of tastes like a little, I don't know if I was about to say spicy salt, but a more spiced up salt. I like the karaage chicken, which I feel like is similar to this that we've had at Epcot at um, Shiki Sai. And I like, you could squeeze lemon on it and I just think it like gives it a really nice flavor. I was expecting that. It's not that. It's definitely got more flour in it. Like how you said, Sam, that flour is already heavy on top. I did get a bit more crunchiness, I feel like, than you got. Without the salt, I'm agreeing with your six. It's a high quality chicken. It's tender, it fall off the, let's say fall off the bones or snow bone. Uh, juicy in the center. With the salt, I would give it a seven. The salt definitely elevates it. Definitely gotta pick one of those spices. I think it's a good option though. It's definitely shareable and it's high quality. So in my mind, Morimoto can truly do no wrong. All right, so this is the item we were probably looking forward to the most. It's the Korean corn dog. It does seem to be a bit spicier. It looks like it has a little spicy. It has um, a sriracha. Yeah, you get to, it's like a sriracha on top. It is made to water, so you'll get it nice and fresh. And, I'm, and you could obviously ask them to not put the sriracha if you don't want that. There's also honey mustard, and it's a beef hot dog, and it's a panko crust, and it is a big boy, like, it's like, I, I can't, this is heavy. I almost like it's hard to maneuver. Portion sizes are big here. Did you get any dog with that? No, the coating is so good and there's like sugar. There's a sweetness to it. There's all that crystallized sugar on the bottom. Is that cheese? Mm. Mozzarella. Oh, a little Italian flair. I'll eventually get to the beef one day. All right, so this video was a learning experience for us. The front half of this hot dog was literally all cheese. So it's just cheese and coating, and then it's just this tiny little beef dog in the middle. I had to do so much work to get to this part. Like, I'm not even kidding, it was like five minutes of taking apart this. I, I helped with eating the cheese a little bit the off camera. It's so good, like I love it. Almost like has like funnel cake vibes because it has like the sweetness, but the cheese wasn't melty enough that was in there, it was just kind of coming out in blocks. I wish it was more like stretched, and I wish the cheese was like around the dog instead of bread, cheese, dog. It's very hard to get this all in one bite. I still didn't get it. Yeah, just bite the dogs. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Is that all the hot dog? Oh my gosh, that's it. Well, at least save me that little guy then. I think we spoke too soon when we said the Iron Chef can do no wrong. You jinxed us, Jay. 
Um, I feel like this item has so much potential, but it falls flat on the execution of it. It's so much, the breading is so good, but there's way too much breading for such a tiny bit of meat. The cheese isn't melty enough, and it's just like you literally, you do all this work to get like this little. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Like, I almost feel like we got a bad batch. Right? Like there's no more hot dog in there. Like how is it? Something, is something wrong? I don't know. It doesn't seem like a, it seems like a Korean, it's like a mini hot dog inside of there. Inside this huge breading, the breading was ginormous. Yeah. I'm gonna give it a five. Jeez. Well, that is definitely the lowest rating. I think this little bird agrees because he's not even eating this, the crumbs. Look, he's walking away. All right, now that Sam did the majority of the work for this tiny dog. Potential is there, but it's just... It's crazy, there's no hot dog, it's all bread. I feel like something's wrong. I almost want somebody to get this. Oh, we found more. What, did it break apart in there? It's still, the coating is just like excessive. Way too much coating. And like you can't enjoy the whole dish because you're not getting like all of it at once because you're having to fight through all that coating. So much potential because the coating is good. But if I had more meat. And cheese. Yeah, the cheese, I mean, there was a decent amount of cheese, but it just, I don't like the separation of both. I'm gonna agree with your five. It's just, it's trying to be too many things at once and it needs to just accept what it is. It's a corn dog, which means it's gotta have a dog. More dog, and this is the weakest option. The one thing we're most looking forward to most was the, the weakest option, I think, out of new things. Although we do have one more new thing, the rice ball. All right, so this one is just gonna be me. It's the uh, teriyaki glazed salmon rice ball. Sam does not eat fish. So it's gonna be all J. I gotta open this up. Oh, it opens like this. You gotta, I'm definitely doing something wrong here. Sounds about right. That. I didn't know rice balls could be triangles. It's like sushi, but not. Why is it not? Because it's cooked. Oh. It's weird. I don't love it. It's like super rice heavy. Doesn't really rely a lot on the salmon. I feel like you need like soy sauce for something like this. Another weak thing. Wow, and we just did a top five or top 10 Disney Spring snack video. And it's, this isn't as good as his usual stuff. Camera overheated, but I wanted to show you guys. I did put a little mustard on it, which definitely elevated it a bit. It shouldn't need that though. And because of that, I'm gonna give it a five. Not something I would get again. Didn't hate it, I ate all of it, but it just wasn't impressive. It was just a rice heavy, little slim, thin salmon. Don't recommend, but we did get our two favorite things on this menu, Sam. So we're definitely gonna finish strong. So here it is, the pork bun. It's like so fluffy, pillowy, delicious pork innards. Sam's gonna try it first. These are one of the supreme buns on Disney property. I was gonna say that. I always know Sam's enjoying this when you can see her lipstick at the end of it. And you don't have to wait for an Epcot festival to get these buns. Because they have them year round. I never take them off the menu. It has like a little sweetness to the pork and the bun. And like it's even like this has been sitting for a while because we've done filmed everything before this. But when you get it, like it's so perfectly steamed and like soft and pillowy. It's still it's still pretty good, but it was super. When I first picked it up to take pictures, like it was perfectly steamed. It's like a little cloud. Um, I really give this a nine. Yeah, definitely better than anything else we've had, any and all of the new stuff. There's a reason it stayed on the menu. The Supreme Pork Bun. Let's do it. Perfectly tender. And you know what I love about it? It doesn't rely on the sauce alone. You can taste the flavor of the actual meat in here, which is what makes it so next level. I'm gonna say, I'm not gonna think it's like, I don't think it's the best pork one I ever had, but it's one of the supreme items here for sure. I'm gonna agree with your nine, Sam. I'm really happy that we got this. And I'm really happy we're running on like a strong note. All right, and here they are. Our favorite thing from here, probably one of our favorite things in all of Walt Disney World, these are the Morimoto ribs. You can get them on the main menu as well as the street food menu. They're so tender that when Jay went to go like pick them up to do B-roll before, they just, they were falling apart. They're my favorite, so tender, a nice glaze. I feel like this piece in particular wasn't as crispy, but I feel like the last couple of times, I feel like they used to be much crispier on the outside. Yeah, and I feel like they used to be individual ribs and now they're like big slabs. Lately, but I still, I, they're still my favorite thing from here. I still think they're like a must get. I'm still gonna stick with a 10. 10 here? I'm loyal to the ribs. I'm, I am also loyal to the ribs. All right, so they have like a, a chili oil or something on them, right? Or is it like chili? I'm not sure, there is a little spice. Yeah, there's a little spice. 
spice on these. But look at it, you could, it just peels off the bone so easy. I do feel like they did change them recently. They're not as crispy. Same flavor profile, but the texture is a big part of it, you know? I'm somewhat disappointed, but I mean, they're still delicious. I'm gonna go nine, because they're not quite as great as the original iteration that we had. I wonder what would happen if we had them in the restaurant. They're still so good though. That, like if you're here, this is one of the things like you have to come and try are these Morimoto ribs. They're probably my favorite ribs of all time. Stick with nine, tender, fall off the bone, just needs a little bit more crispness. Out of everything though, the classics still reign supreme. You know, I think you agree, right Sam? The ramen was good though. It's just, I don't want to eat ramen in the summer. Yeah, ramen. Outside. Ramen was the best new thing and the classics, the pork bun and the, and the ribs. If you're here, that's what we suggest you go to. Uh, chicken was okay, it's, it's a good new offering. But overall, classics still win. Before we head out, I wanted to show you guys this sign that kind of goes over why Morimoto takes street food so seriously. It goes back to the 14th century and highlights the culture of the area, the experience of being in that area. And it reminds him of his hometown. How do you feel about Amaretz? All right, let's go. Amaretz is actually in the town center section of Disney Springs, so we can take this bridge that's actually right near Morimoto to get over there. Looks like they have a Mushu cake pop and a strawberry boba milk tea petite cake. All right, let's head inside. They're known for these dome cakes. This is the cake you saw outside, as well as these Mickey Mouse petite cakes. These all look so good. We got one of the roses. We also got a Mushu cake pop. All right, for those that don't know, Sam used to own a cake pop business. So we had to get, or I had to get Sam's thoughts on the Mushu cake pop. I think it's a red velvet flavor, right? Uh, it's chocolate and red velvet, and it's a cake bar, not a pop. That's true. It's big. Oh, oh. It tastes more dark chocolate than anything. It's a very like rich dark chocolate flavor. I don't taste red velvet as much, and I feel like there's there's something crunching in there too. It's very moist. I know, I don't like that word, but that's what it is. The desserts here are high quality, so I feel like the cake is always juicy. And it's not it's not overly sweet. It's just a rich chocolate, dense bar pop mushu. Yeah, and there's definitely there's some kind of crunchiness in there, like little pearls or something on the inside. I feel like Mushu would have a little crunch. Not my favorite thing in here from here because they have such high quality things. I love the eclairs here a lot. I would give this an eight though. It is, it is really good. Eight's still a very high number. Now this is one of our favorite items from here. It's the red rose. I think it's a mousse basically, right? It's cake and mousse. It does have some fake gold on top. You can see this has been around for years, this thing. Yeah, we've had, they've had this back in 2017. We just ruined this beauty. Oh, it looks like it's got a little juice in the center of it. Let me get the, get a corner off. Why don't you put it on the plate? Oh yeah, that would have been smart. Let's try this out. It's such a high quality mousse. This tastes like something you can get at like a high-end restaurant. And then, look Sam, it's got a little, a little strawberry or something right in there. Very good. I'm gonna go nine. I mean, I'm almost going to go 10, but I, I want a little bit more filling from it. If not for like the limited filling, I think it should be easily 10. It's, it's delicious. It's, when you think of a mousse, like a perfect mousse, this is like almost it. Presentation's there, flavor's there, good like bitter notes from the chocolate, but then also a good creaminess as well because it's milk chocolate. Just a very good and great texture. All right, so that does it for our time checking out the brand new food at Morimoto Street Food and a brand new cake pop at Amaretz. We also had some classics along the way. I'm so happy we were able to show Amaretz today because I feel like we've bragged about them in previous videos and we've been here or been to Amaretz so many times we've never actually videoed it, never documented it before. Yeah. And the food there really, or the desserts, are so good. We have to try their regular food. They have sandwiches that look like amazing. We have had one of their sandwiches before. Years ago. Yeah, so long. It's like four years ago. They're, everything from Amaretz is delicious. We recommend it. Morimoto, on the other hand, we used to recommend everything there, and I, I can't say that now, right? It's disappointing when you hype a place up and then they come out with something new and you're yeah. excited to try it and it kind of falls flat. But like, I prefer to be honest about it. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Like, some of the things fell flat. Like, it just. Chicken was okay. Uh, the, the ramen was the best new thing. Um, the salmon thin thing was okay. And then the um, 
corn dog just wasn't it. And it was the thing we're most excited for. Way too much breading, unfortunately. Maybe we got a bad batch. Maybe you should try it out for yourself if you think it looks interesting. It's definitely too much breading for us. Uh, best thing we ate today, though? Ribs. Ribs. Ribs win. I feel like we just had them like two days ago, too. <laughs> yeah, I can't get enough I think of we did. <laughs> I'm Morimoto. I'll, I'll eat the ribs, Morimoto ribs every single day of my life. Yeah. Uh, also, best dessert was definitely the rose. That red rose is delicious. The cake bar thing was good, but after like having the rose right there, I thought yeah. I was like, oh no, the rose is so good. The rose has just like a bitter, this light, fluffy consistency. Yep. It's just so good. The perfect type of mousse. Um, the cake bar, unfortunately, I, I feel like it didn't need the chalk on the outside. I mean, but I feel like that's how those are made though. They're all like yeah. dipped in something. That's the point of them. Very true. And if you enjoy the content, please like and subscribe. Liking will really help our channel grow. It pushes this video out into the stratosphere of the YouTube algorithm. It helps other people find the video. Subscribing, it also helps our channel grow. Hit the bell notification so that way you're notified every time when videos come out, which is when, Sam? Every Monday and Thursday at 12 p.m. Thanks so much for watching. Don't count the days. We will see you next time. That's all, folks. We lost our Disney Springs end credits area, so I'm going to show you guys that chicken guy is currently under refurbishment. I hope they refurbish their chicken because last time we were here, <laughs> it was not good. And the people you see scrolling up on the screen right now, those are our members. If you have any interest in a membership, check out the join button below. We want to give a special thank you to their generosity and for staying until the end to watch this random blue wall. <laughs> but we do appreciate anyone who just likes, comments, subscribes. All your support really helps this channel grow. And hopefully, Chicken Guy will come back better than ever. It's actually still open while it's under refurbishment. But they did not have a good experience last time.